worked in Chennai. We have abundant sunshine. We have only sunshine here, nothing else. That's Solar Suresh. His actual name is Dwaraka Das. And that's his 7 kilowatt rooftop solar installation. He's been a user of solar energy for over a decade. At that time, solar was not a very well known or popular. People are not even talking about it. I used to invest money to find solutions. So I did one kilowatt that cost me almost three lakhs on that day. Today you can do one kilowatt at about less than 60,000 rupees. Experts like Solar Suresh have seen the acceptance of solar energy go up and their prices go down. So when we get about 100 inquiries, we used to con you know, uh, convince about 10 customers to buy solar. Now we even get 15, 20, we convince half of them. Solar has become a successful product. In February 2024, the central government launched the Prime Minister Surya Ghar scheme to subsidize rooftop solar. Each state plans and executes the scheme. Tamil Nadu set a target for the first time, an ambitious one. Despite increased consumer interest and subsidies, the sun is not shining on the state's rooftop solar dreams. The New Indian Express revealed that the pickup was slow until October 2024. Conversations with individuals and businesses point to issues such as contradicting policies impacting rooftop solar adoption in Tamil Nadu for years. This continues to affect the scheme. Residential rooftop solar has given rise to prosumers, consumers who are also electricity producers. They can generate their power in the daytime, reducing dependency on power suppliers. They can also supply excess power they produce back to the grid. This on-grid rooftop solar allows them to consume electricity from the grid without sunlight too. Yoganand is one of those in Tamil Nadu's tier 2 towns who have responded to the solar boom. He set up a small business selling rooftop solar panels to prosumers in Tiruchirappalli. In the Modi PM, I told you that I have to solar panels. Actually, I have to prepare the customer first to prepare the current bill. Thousand, two thousand, na veenda. Ye bhi pilo ko pawa vanta nengya. Adin chole ro, naane chole ro na. Ye bo two thousand, three thousand ki mela pona mudda. Aungal solar aur pota adhi useful. Kamiya arke the best. Yena tariff ro aungal ko kamiya da arko. Aayin yuno te yar cross panta kono aungal ko solar pota safe. This is because the Tamil Nadu government gives the first hundred units for free to houses that consume less than five hundred units of electricity. This accounts for almost 64% of electricity consumers. The majority of the uh, rural uh, population uh, consumes only less than 100 units or maximum of 100, 200 units per by, by cycle. So the, uh, the uptake of rooftop solar in urban is more and the uptake of rooftop solar in rural is nearly zero. Moreover, commercial users cannot avail of the solar subsidy. So, it's largely the residential prosumers in urban areas who might benefit. This 3.3 kW solar power plant will cost about 1.2 lakhs after subsidy. And the subsidy takes about 3 months of time to get credited into the customer's bank account. The scheme offers a maximum subsidy of 78,000 rupees for on-grid solar above 3 kW. And the remaining amount? the consumer has to pay from their pocket. Many banks offer loans to residential prosumers too. Solar adoption is generally based on customer needs. Commercial and domestic. Domestic. If we look at this, we will have a first initial cost. If you say that the bank is saying, it is not easy to do it. If it is not easy to do it, it will be easy to do it. Ultimately, why do people invest in installing rooftop solar panels? To save on power bills. And if the saving is delayed, it affects their motivation, experts told Mongabay India. The rooftop solar is uh, installed by the middle income people or the higher income people. So where they can create and budget for it and they can install it. But at the end of the day, that should be a economic, an economically viable thing. 
if the developer says that I'll, it, my return on investment will be taken back in 10 years, if the network chess component is added to it, it will be a 15 years or it will be more than that based on the network charges or the tariff rates determined by the commission. Network charges. What are they and why are they a concern for many prosumers? First, we must understand how people get power in their homes and second, how prosumers are billed. Our homes get electricity generated by power plants and this power is transmitted via a grid. Consumers pay a state utility provider for managing power generation and distribution. In Tamil Nadu, it was handled by one entity called Tamil Nadu Generation and Distribution Corporation or Tangedco, which has now split into three bodies. This brings us to the second point, billing. If a consumer consumes 500 units of electricity from the grid and supplies 200 units of power back to the grid from their rooftop solar, they will be charged for 300 units. Basically, the power supplied back to the grid is subtracted from the total power consumed from the grid to calculate their final power consumption. This is called net metering. So if there are more prosumers, the state utilities stand to lose revenue. I assume that most of the people who have set up rooftop solar are from the middle income, upper middle income and high income uh, households. So most of these households who do that are the people who are the highest paying uh, domestic commercial uh, customers of Tangent Co. So the minute they leave the grid, there is a huge loss of revenue for Tangent Co. And the Tangent Co is left with people who are below the 500 unit mark, which basically doesn't give them revenue and they are also in the subsidized category. Tangent Co feels like they are losing out their revenues. So they have a substation involved, they have a manpower and they have a power plant generation involved and everything. So, so they feel like they are losing money on the other end. So how do they mitigate it? So they have come up with the charges called networking charges. Networking charges mainly something like uh, renting out your infrastructure. So they are saying like we have invested so much of money into the entire infrastructure. So, which is enabling you to use solar. So, they have come up with a networking charges. So, that comes about 120 rupees or 130 rupees per kilowatt for residential customers. So, if you put up a 3 kilowatt system, then you have to pay about 360 rupees every bi monthly. Network charges are a burden for many consumers. As of November 2024, Tamil Nadu is the only state that levies network charges. There's a consumer perspective, right? It's being profitable, return on investment is being higher and everything. On the other side, Tangent Co feels like they're losing out their revenues. But for some, such charges are justified. Supply is not used to the grid. That's why we charge 200 rupees for a kilowatt. 2 kilowatt. So, that's a must. So, that's why we use all the grid. That's why we use all the grid. That's why we use all the grid. For commercial prosumers such as offices and hospitals, the deal could be worse, say experts. They pay more per unit for consuming from the grid than residential users. Plus, when they supply excess rooftop solar power back to the grid, Tangidco gives them a lower price per unit. So, in net feed, what happens is that what you export is considered as a lesser rate, that is somewhere around two and a half rupees to three rupees. Say an office produces 500 units from its rooftop solar. They consume 400 units during the day and supply 100 units to the grid. When solar panels are inactive at night, they consume 200 units directly from the grid. For the excess 100 units the office supplied to the grid, the utility pays them three rupees per unit. However, for the 200 units consumed at night, the utility will charge the office approximately 10 to 12 rupees per unit. This means the commercial consumer ends up paying a significant amount every month. So, uh, actually I would say these are the barriers created by the Tangent Co to protect their revenue base which is commercial and industrial customers majorly. As of September 2024, Tamil Nadu ranks third in installed solar capacity in India with only a fraction of rooftop solar. Despite the best efforts of citizens and the central government's carrot-and-stick techniques to push for rooftop solar, 
the heart of the problem is the paradoxical role entrusted upon state utilities. The central government scheme of PM Suryagar basically imposes this condition on Tangent Co to or Tangent Co or any state utility which is going through this kind of a process to give them a target to do such a thing. I feel that this is not a feasible solution. The model on which the utility survives, selling power, getting revenue itself is under question. The whole world thinking is to figure that you go slow on your target until you are able to figure out a way out for yourself. It's like this chakra vayu, you know, they get caught in a slow moving chakra vayu which is of external forces which is making them, basically the central government making them to do these things and the state government being asked to do certain things.